Welcome to another Planet 6 Parts video. Today's video, transmission cover removal. Uh, so this gearbox cover obviously is a, uh, it's seen its days and uh, needs to come off and be replaced. It has big gaping holes in it, so I don't want to get the carpet destroyed, so it's going to come out. Now these are a one piece. Uh, you can buy them in a two piece one to make life a little easier getting them in and out. Uh, however, the one pieces usually now come on plastic and they're a little finicky to get in and out. So this is a fiberglass one. So it's solid. If you have an original original one, obviously it's a fiber board, and most of the time you end up just ripping it out like the Hulk. However, to get these off, it is a little finicky, and there is a way of doing it because, um, well, let's see, there's an act to do it. So because you're one piece, you realize in order to take it up, now I've already undone all the, the nuts and bolts, uh, the bolts on the side, you realize that it doesn't just come up because um, the handbrake is in the way. You try to turn this way, no matter what way you turn, it, it gets a little stuck. Here's the trick to getting it off. What we want to do is raise the front of it up as much as we can. Alright, so bring the whole thing up, and we're going to slide the bottom of it across until it's just past the gear stick. When it gets past, we're going to rotate it a small bit, and then we're going to continue to keep sliding it back. As we keep going back, we'll put it into gear at the, uh, make sure it's in like second, or foot, uh, go in. As you keep going, just keep rotating a small bit, a small bit, until it gets to a point where we can go up. So come up, and then basically from there, you just have to follow the angle to get it up. Now look at how it comes out. Oh, no. Oops, well, sorry. I disconnected everything, but the wires have to come through. The angle in which it came out is going to be the same angle in which it goes in. Now, um, I had just actually redone the rubbers here on the bottom um, to put in, and they're their own thing. Um, I was going to make a video on it, but uh, <laughs> it is frustrating to put them in, and I wasn't sure because the only way I found of doing them is using super glue of all things. Now, I know you said, I've said it before, I don't like silicone or super glue, shouldn't belong in the car. That is true, uh, especially in the engine bay. However, I used a tiny little bit just to hold it in place until I actually put holes in it and go through it. So what I've done is, just to run and show what I'm here. The rubber strip you get, and I wish I had some left, but unfortunately I don't, because one strip literally does both sides. Um, it's not great for turning corners. So when you get to a bend like here, what I've done is, I put a little slit in it. So I put a little V shape, I'll put it in the corner, and that allows when it goes up to actually bend and go down. So I'll look, put a little, like a little drop of glue here, a little drop here, a little drop here, a little drop here, because I'll put another V shape on the inside there uh, to make it go around. And it's just to hold it in place. Um, now, as you can see, there's marks here what I put on the floor pan. That's simple chalk. I chalked where the hold should be, because once obviously the rubber goes on, you can't see nothing. So I basically chalked where the holes will be all the way along. Uh, once I've done that, I took a soldering iron that has a point, and because I knew it, I was able to put the soldering iron down into the hole and come up and actually run a circle, and that allowed me to get a decent sized hole through the rubber, because as we've all done, if you're trying to get a bolt, uh, one of these bolts here, through rubber, and you just put an X, or a cross, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't go in right, and it's frustrating. You literally have to cut out a hole. So using the soldering iron, I made to hold it up, and imagine this is a soldering iron. I'd go down, come up, and I'd go in a circular motion with it. And yes, it smells like burning rubber. Yes, it smells absolutely atrocious. But now I get a cleaner finish in order for it to slide down and not have that rubber push in or get stuck or jammed and that you're just struggling to get the bolt down. But to get this on, yeah, it is frustrating. If I was doing it again, do you know what, I'd probably recommend putting it on upside down because you have a flatter surface, it doesn't make a difference. It's shaped to go over this, but it never actually fits. Mm, it's shaped for something that doesn't fit. Um, because you'll still get the same seal. And again, just wherever you have a bend, so if I'm starting this end and coming up, when I'm going left, I'll put a V-shape on this side. If I'm turning right, I'll put a V-shape on the inside. And the same with the top end. It is a little frustrating. It'll never sit absolutely perfect. In an ideal world, you should have just made, got these molded to shape. Because all the floor pans are the same shape anyway. Anyway, that's my little piece about putting the rubbers on. So, uh, just attack it out. You can use a silicone and a clamp if you want, but to be honest, you, just, you want to hold it just enough in position just to get the, uh, 
the cover. So, new cover. Here's the new cover that's going on. Uh, plastic, big, awkward, uh, never easy to get on. Um, this one did, it is new, it was on a car. So I'm putting some silicone on. Yeah, silicone. Mm -hmm. This one was on a car, I took it off, it's going on this one. So again, how do we install it? The same way you don't came off. So we have to put it at an angle. So basically we have to slide it between the gear stick and here and come down at an angle and again shimmy it down until it slides across and goes across. So up at an angle, it comes down. So keep bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down. And the gearbox has a bit of play in it, just to come down. Now it comes down again, the same thing, keep it up high, push it across and drop it down. Once it's down after that, we have a bit of, we do have a bit of play to put your rubbers through if you, do, if you have the grommet already in it or if you want to put it in. But you can do it that way and then you can actually put your gator here as well. But that's basically what it is. So it has to come at an angle. In this case, would it work? Nah, it could work the other way, but I've always done it from this side heading towards the, uh, the footwell uh, for a left hand drive. And it says at an angle, turn in, keep it raised and it'll drop down. So that's basically the trick. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually put the grommets in it. I'm gonna line it all up and uh, have it sitting down and so on. But that's it. That's basically how we get in and out. It's gonna be frustrating of when I first doing it. It was very frustrating trying to get this in and out. Like how does it fit in one piece? So that's the trick is at a slight angle and then turn it and then drop it down. So uh, that's it. Hope this video helps. Any questions, comments, concerns, by all means, drop me an email, a uh, message if you want me to see uh, other videos I want to do. Um, by all means, get in contact with me. And I appreciate all the nice comments people are saying. Um, as I said, I try to do these videos in one go, no cutting, editing, just the simple struggles that any one of us would be doing working on these cars. So uh, I appreciate all the good comments. And yeah, hopefully I can bring in more videos that are just as helpful and just as useful. So thanks for watching.